What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case RK's video. On this one today, we're going full detail, full force. I'm gonna talk your ear off. We're talking about Hogwarts Magical Pinball. There is so much to discuss. Stay tuned. <laughs> Alright guys, you know, if you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. You can reach out to me, send me questions, send me comments. Instagram is the best and quickest way to get me. But also, I'm on TikTok. And honestly, I posted a video of this and it hit quite a lot of views. So I feel like a couple of new subscribers are from TikTok. So if you are, thank you for joining and subscribing, hopefully. Um, there's a lot to discuss with this pin. There is so much to talk about. I don't want to talk your ear off, but I feel like there's a lot of details I have to go over. I do have to make a lot of videos because I am going to be creating this thing tomorrow. I'm hoping to get this out the door and sent to Canada at least by Friday. Today is Monday, so uh, there's a lot to go through. Also keep in mind, stay tuned. I, I don't know if I'm going to do it with this pin specifically. I might do it with maybe the other two. I do plan to redo kind of like a how to wire a virtual pinball cabinet. Um, and the biggest thing is that I'm gonna be taking that 50 inch cab, putting it side by side, because we are gonna compare the screens on it. Now, if you did not watch the overview video, go watch that and then come back, because I went over basics, I went over the PC specs, the screen specs, and the DOF link specs. This one's gonna be long. Um, it also might turn into a little bit of a tutorial towards the end for the customer. I always do that. Um, I always make that. That's not really for a viewer to watch, but you could watch it. You could watch it. Hey, okay, you could watch it. Um, you know, maybe you get an idea of how to wire up your cabin and all that. Basically, like when this gets sent out, the back box is separate. I don't. I'm not a fan of like real. Like you know how real pinball machines have like the arm, and then you could drop it. I'm not a fan of that for this. Um, not to mention it's a very big like arm that's here and it messes up your artwork. This is coming off. This is a totally separate piece. Legs are going to be coming off as well. You never transport these with legs on. You might break out the bracket. But you'll see that I basically, again, now I have customers. I build these in a way that it's not an easy connection. I do have them connected with like, I'm going to show you at the end. But uh, it's a couple of things to get in and then you'll be up and playing. I think the best thing to start with this is let's talk about the screens, okay? Screens, if you look at my personal Simpsons pinball cabinet, again, right now running a 50 inch QNED, just like this pin here. This actual customer is the one that gave me the idea or the insight that there was a 50 inch QNED screen that could do 120 Hertz. I have a 50 inch build and Canada wanted a 42 inch build. I don't know if it was really due to the size, maybe he had a size or strength, or he really wanted to go around the actual LG C2 OLED screen. Either way, he's super happy, he's super excited, and this OLED screen, this 42, it is a thing of beauty. This is my first ever 42 inch build. I've never done a 42 inch, and I'll be honest, there it's 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 packed uh when it came to wiring and adjusting solenoids and that it's packed there's not as much space as the 50 inch but i still made it work not to mention all the stuff that's in here there's a lot of stuff going on here and i'm just happy that i got it to work it is much it's a much more confined space but again the big thing is these screens and now, again, a lot of people that are inquiring, like I said earlier, TikTok, I posted a video on TikTok and the views skyrocketed and then emails are coming in. And big thing that people don't understand, they will never understand, but now like me personally, having this 120 hertz screen, it is a game changer. Not to mention he's got OLED. This has a QNED. I'm not gonna say which one is better. I will do a comparison video. I have the QNED, okay? I, it's, there's a lot to discuss with the comparison, but you're gonna see that in a separate video. But I personally had a BS Samsung 4K 60 Hertz. I then put the 50 inch QNED 120 Hertz. It is a must. 
It's a game changer number one, but it is a must. It is a standard. I think now you need that. If you are getting a V-Pin from a builder and they're gonna give you a 60 hertz screen and they're gonna charge you five figures for it, you should laugh in their face because there's, it, no. It, it, it's okay if you're on a budget, but me personally, and I've had like, you know, I had my wife play the 60 hertz one and then she saw the new one and she's like, Push. it is mind boggling the technology now with these screens. The biggest thing, and you're gonna see this in the V-Pin community, people all day comparing and heart and criticizing, uh, 50 inches too big, it's too, no, it's not. This right here is a standard pinball cabinet. This is almost identical to a standard pin. You wanna talk about an ACDC, you wanna talk about a Guns N' Roses, you wanna talk about like the Godfather, uh, the new Godfather that came out standard edition, Foo Fighters. These, that's what this is like replicating. This is that size. A 48 inch or a 50 inch pin like this, this is replicating a wide body pin. These are two separate pinball machines. So stop with the arguing. Why is this one, it's so much bigger. No, it's, it's whatever you want. I personally built mine where I wanted bigger is better. This still 42, it, it feels right. I'm not saying that this does not feel right, but me now going to like, you know, my local arcade round one that they have the newish Sterns like Mandalorian and I've played the new TMNT, this is what it replicates. My shoulder width here, this is correct here. But again, my personal pin and these pins, the 50 inch, it's really not, it's not that bad. But again, keep in mind, it is a bigger screen. Now keep in mind, I do build these custom made to order. I am the type of person that I actually need the screens in hand. Now many people understand this, but every TV is built differently. Whether it's, you know, a TV is skinnier and then it's deeper. Every TV is built differently, but the biggest thing is that some TVs are almost bezel-less and some TVs have a bezel. I am the type of person, I build custom-made. This is not a Game Room Solutions cabinet. The GRS ain't touching this at all. It's custom-made and I do need the screen. This C2 OLED is bezel-less, but it does have a quarter of an inch on the bottom for the TV sensor. Me as a builder, that translates to me needing to add a quarter of an inch to the opposite side, the top of the TV now, to make sure that the TV is centered, okay? What does that mean, what am I getting at? The 50 inch QNED that I have in my pin and I have here, that right here has a bezel on the bottom of the screen, inch and a half. Now, an inch and a half, that doesn't sound, that's a big deal. Inch and a half is big. It's, and it, on this screen here, it's only on the bottom. That translates to me needing to add an inch and a half on the opposite side. What am I getting at? This right now, 23 inches wide. This right now with the inch and a half add-on, I'm at 28 inches. So again, five inch difference. Now, some people be like, Vic, five inches, that's a lot. In my mind, it's two and a half and two and a half. It's not that, it's not that big of a deal. So if, like me, I went bigger screen because I wanted a bigger screen, it works out in the end. The only big thing for me and my pin, for example, I swapped out. I had a Samsung screen and I swapped it out for the QNED. I don't have the beauty of my screen being centered. What does that mean? Basically, I, I didn't have enough room because again, my cabinet was built around the Samsung. I didn't have enough room to have an inch and a half added to the top. So on my screen, and only really I see it, I do see the black bezel on the left side and I don't see anything on the right side. So again, some people are picky. Hey Vic, I gotta make sure that that is centered. I have that for these. What's really great though in this situation is the addressable LEDs in those side rails. This pin right here, an inch and a half is big, but I have these adjustable LED side rails. The side rails are 5'8", so it doesn't, it doesn't look like a big gaping hole. Also not to mention the side rails help on that. Now that I mentioned like adjustable LEDs, let's talk about the adjustable LEDs because I, I gotta talk about it. Now again, the newest thing in this virtual pinball community is this addressable LED add-on. I do have to give a big shout out to Emil over at Way of the Wrench. I did follow his tutorials, he's got two videos. Basically, if you follow it to the T, you will get your adjustable LEDs working. The only thing I will mention though, 
is when it comes time to assigning those ports inside of the Arnaz stuff, he is missing like a statement. Um, again, he starts out by saying that you just use these two wires, which is the orange, but when he came to programming, he was programming it into different like ports. His ports though were using basically the orange and white and then using the green and white, whereas basically you just remove the ports and just keep it in that one single port. Anyway, here's the thing. Here's my opinion on addressable LEDs. And again, shout out to the guys that are doing the addressable LEDs, creating it, making the designs. I'm not knocking you here, but personal preference, I, I'm not a fan. It's a pass for me. Why do I say that? I, it, to me, it's just, it's flashy, okay? But I feel like what I did I removed the flashiness, I removed the blindness and the distraction, and now it looks it looks good, it looks settling. What am I getting at? Basically, there's builders and there's our people that are making these things, and the biggest thing that I do not like is when you actually see the LEDs. When you actually see the bare LED, I hate it. I think it's ugly. I mean, again, no offense to you, but I think it's ugly. What am I getting at? Basically, some people have the side rails. They, you can actually see the LED strip. Let me get a strip. I'm talking this. When you see bare LED, I'm, I'm, and again, this is my opinion. If you have it and you like it, that is fine. I don't care. This is my opinion, okay? When you just see the bare LEDs like that, I don't like it. It, it kills the vibe. It's just, it doesn't look right. Oh, Vic, they have like the angles and they have the smoke. I bought that. I have that. This is the angle I have. This is the 45 degree angle. You put the LED track here. This is what it looks like. Yeah, but Vic, they have the smoked out thing that you could buy for. I have it. I have it. And look, even when you add the smoked out thing, you still see that LED and it, it doesn't look good to me. It does not look right. So aside from being flashy and blinding, it's also like the visual aspect. But as you can see on mine, you don't see that. You know why? Because I took this, I'll give you my secret. I took this, I took black spray paint and I did two passes, that is it. Two passes, that's all you need and you will get what you see on the screen here, which is Nothing. You don't even see that the side rails are there. That's what I love about it. Now moving up to the LED matrix. Again, shout out to Emil. There are companies out there, there's builders out there, and I laughed. They only have like one, they only bought one LED matrix panel. You went to that extent, you only put one panel? No, I did like Emil, we went coast to coast. This right here is one big, I think it's like a, an eight by 32. And then I have two eight by 16s. Coast to coast, edge to edge, and I made its own plexiglass front and psh, psh, I painted it. And as you can see, you virtually don't see the LEDs. Now, like I said, my opinion is that I thought, I think it's too flashy. I think it's just too distracting. So Project Canada said to me, he goes, hey, Vic, man, let's do it, but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta help me out, man. If I don't like it, you know, what can we do? And I said, I got you, bro. I got one single switch, cuts it all out. Just the LED matrixes alone. Still have DOP, you still have the underglow, but the LED matrices, I put its own switch. So now real quick, I bought you in and I zoomed you in and you could see the side rails, you could see it is virtually not there. Even on the back, you don't see the actual heads. It's a thing of beauty. Now, honestly, now that I told you that it is spray painted, you could kind of see, you know, some of the parts is a little bit darker than the other, but the biggest thing was that I wanted to make sure that you do not see the LED head. It is just a must. I'm gonna turn on the lights. Turn on the garage lights. Again, even with the lights on, if I turn off the power, if I cut out the power, it's, it's like it's not there. That's all, it's not, it's not there. You don't see anything. Now the other thing to note about doing this whole LED matrix thing compared to mine, doing this, I now had to put the TV lower. It is not up against the glass like my personal build. 
How do I feel about that? Honestly, it's it, it looks fine. It actually looks really good. Vic, maybe you could put artwork here. I really can't. Vinyl, so basically the TV, I actually have it on a piece of wood. There's, it's, it's, it's like a TV mount, but it's a piece of wood. Instead of a metal bracket, it's just straight wood. And that wood is like, it's, there's, no, there's no play. Uh, so if I did put vinyl along the sides, that vinyl would definitely rip. So honestly, it, it comes out great. And not to mention the LED rails, the side rails, it hides that sensor. So you don't even see that it's a TV, honestly. It's, it's a thing of beauty. Let me turn it back on. It's a very simple switch. Boop. One simple switch, that's it. And again, we are in pin a popper or track mode. So some of them will have the side rails going. All of them will have the LED matrix in the back, but some of them have the side rails added and stuff. But again, that LED matrix back here, as you can see, you don't see the white heads. That's, that's, I said, that's a deal breaker to me. That's a deal breaker. Now we're not talking about the 50 inch pin, but just to kind of show you it again, side rails removable. You can see that inch and a quarter bezel. TV sensor right here and then up an inch. So you could get the idea that the side rail, I'm gonna have to make a nice little rig, but you could see that there's still a little gap. That's where the side rail will come in. Same thing here, coast to coast on that LED matrix. Still on the subject of adjustable LEDs, check it out. We'll talk about the back box now. And as you can see, I do have adjustable LEDs where the statues are in the DMD area. Awesome, I mean, it's a pretty big strip. Customer supplied the LEDs, he bought them on Amazon. And uh, basically instead of me just you know cutting them, I kind of used them to the max potential. I tried to use as much LEDs that he gave me. And basically it's, based, it's kind of like a, a rectangle in the rear. It actually goes along here, forward, in front of the statue, on the side of the statue, the rear comes around here and then comes again. So it's wrapped around the statue. It's almost like an eight, I guess you could say. Um, it's just awesome. It looks cool. I do like the adjustable LEDs here. I dig that. Again, when it comes to it being on the play field, going back to like I said, I feel like now that I have this kind of custom painted, no longer seeing the LED heads, I like the adjustable LEDs now. Only downside to me personally, this is my personal opinion, I like my TVs up against the glass. Um, you know, because virtually you are able to add side the side blades um on the screen to the table uh whereas now it's like side blades are on the screen and then you have black side that's just me so i like the adjustable leds i'm not a fan of the indent it looks great though it's just me personally i like my screens up against the glass real quick we'll talk about the back glass and the back box and all that customers supplied this lg 32 inch screen it did have a bezel unlike the viewsonics that i use where it's virtually bezel-less except for the bottom it does have a bezel this is cool when it came to the dmd panel here and again i don't know if you could see it but this piece of wood right here is actually covering the bezel of the screen the bottom of it basically there's a logo here it's an lg logo it's just my, my CNC skills got a little bit better. Same thing when it translates to the actual DMD screen. CNC'd out, it fits perfectly. But this DMD screen, it was a challenge, especially with where the connections are. Then we'll talk real quick about the actual display. There is plexiglass here. Same thing, cnc the square out. A little bit outer edge, this way the kind of glass stays in place, the plexiglass. And it, it looks awesome. Now that I mentioned the DMD, might as well show it to you. So right now, and I, I think I'm gonna send this to Canada like this. I have, you could put four screws here. I actually have the holes here, but I never punctured through because honestly, it's such a tight fit. You could actually just do that. So I'll let Canada decide if he wants to puncture the holes. Let me put this down. And the rear is the rear. I'll take this paint, this tape off. I realized that inside the promo video. I'll take this off later on. I don't want to get it too dusty. But this is the rear. As you can see, DMD, I do have this Molex connector. That's all like the main connections. That's the speaker connection. That's talking to the RGB flashes. That's talking to the strobes I have right here. A lot of communication is here. But again, I brought you back here to show you the DMD. 
I should have done this before, but real quick, you can see here my two switches. The top one is for the LED matrixes and basically the addressable LEDs. And the bottom switch is for the solenoid. So strobes, beacons, the shaker motor, this kills all that in DOF links. And you have your basic power connection. So I should have done that while I was showing you the HDMI, but I'll turn it off now. Now the only big challenge when it comes to like these displays and all that, and as you can see in this situation, I would have made a wall here, like a side wall, but I couldn't do it. It just, it, it's, it's not, it wasn't gonna work out the way it is. So basically, I'm gonna give him one of these Velcro straps and he'll just have to just kind of squeeze his wires just like this and wrap it. That is it. Now when it comes to the actual connections and when he gets it, I have screws here. He's gonna screw down here and inside the hole here is gonna be the Molex. It's gonna have the power, so you need Molex, power for the back glass, you need power for the DMD, and then you need the two HDMI cables. So there's five connections uh, that will be there, but I'm gonna label it all out for him and all that so he doesn't have to worry about any of that. But as you can see, back box. Now the biggest challenge was this. I did, I did wanna keep in mind like, you know, accessibility and you got the fans here. This is where like all the heat is and all that. But basically I have the PC in its case still. It's on its own kind of shelf that I could pull out. I'm not gonna pull it out because everything's powered on. But basically you just grip it from the sides and then you could pull the whole PC out. I do have this kind of custom ledge thing that before it goes in transit, this will hold this in place so we don't have to worry about anything in transit. So look at that. Perfectly, the door is gonna pop inside. It is. There's a lot of thinking that went on. And again, the PC ain't gonna go nowhere. So in transit, it's not going anywhere. He really won't have to go here. I do have on the right side here, the Z533 volume wheel. Um, I have that set, he could always play around with it, but you don't see there, but up above here, I have the two amps for the SSF. On the left side here, I do have the shaker motor vol uh, power knob and also the um, Teensy board for the LED matrix. So as you can see, like that PC area, it is, it's, it's tight. It is tight, but I'm very happy and I feel very secure, especially the way that I put the PC on a shelf. I basically put like wood shims. So that shelf slides in and under like wood planks so that in transit, it's not gonna go anywhere. Not to mention that PC case, I hard bolted it down to that piece of wood, so it's not gonna go anywhere. I'll be honest, I was like worried about the PC. I was gonna decase the PC, but when it came time to securing that GPU, I was, I was in a panic. And then I was looking at like these open air frames and it's like 120 bucks for these open air frames, ATX. I was like, your PC came pre-built with a case. Not to mention the case has two fans in it already. I was like, it was a no brainer. I basically made that door opening around the PC case. So I have the PC case and then I added, it was about an inch, yeah. It was an inch or an inch and a half um, overall. This way I have a quarter of an inch of a ledge to keep it down and another quarter of an inch there. So there's a lot of planning when it comes to it. Now as far as shipping, I am very confident that nothing's gonna happen in shipping, but I will be removing the LED matrix and the LED side rails. I have those as like quick connect, so it's very simple. It's just, the way it like works out, it's not like hard mounted. Um, honestly, the sides of the cabinet is keeping it tight and secure, and it, I just don't want it where in transit it's gonna bounce and it's gonna hit the screen. I am keeping the screen in. That screen is not going anywhere, and also the glass will be on. Same thing for the back box. Everything here is gonna go. Back box is a separate piece. I'll put it in a box. I will be removing the figurines though. So this is awesome, he found these figurines and I basically made these custom stands for them. And it fits exactly, this kind of figurine has like this legging here and it just fits like a puzzle piece, boom. It's not going anywhere, look at that. Not going nowhere. So it's just custom man, it's, it's custom. Now as far as another piece of customization, the four buttons here, we, he told me what he wanted, we did a Harry Potter theme. So the start button, it says Accio or Accio. I'm gonna say it's Accio. I've been playing Hogwarts too. I'm gonna say Accio. It says Accio here and then his coin button is an actual logo that says the Bank of Gringotts. 
He's got for the extra ball, which right now VPX removed extra ball as a key thing and it's not really needed, but this is really the shift key and also the camera change view in FX3 and 2. He's got like this triangle thing, I don't know. And then the exit button is basically two thunderbolts that make an X. So custom is custom. So we'll touch up real quick on the side rails and the lockdown bar and the glass. This was a must. Canada told me, he's like, Vic, man, I didn't like what you did with your lockdown bar on your personal pin. I felt like your wrists get butchered, even though they don't. I said, don't worry, dude. I got Eric Biggie Productions. He's going to hook us up. He's going to help us out and give us some ideas. I sent this when I got that, when I made that video. Canada loves this. He goes, Vic, how does it feel on your palms? I said, dude, it feels beautiful. Now, Eric has the at games pinball machine like the at games v pin and he honestly was mimicking the lockdown bar on that he could also do that little kind of like um i don't know what do you want to call it that design that kind of swoops down it's not needed but he could do it but the lockdown bar he's able to power record it to anything we want any color you want so i did the black that black matches that black leg it looks awesome the glass Man, I, I called up like six glaciers. Glass is glass. Glass is expensive. Not to mention, I did get tempered glass. Real pinball machines have tempered glass. I was talking to a couple of people and they're like, well, tempered glass is like, it won't like slice your arm off or something like that. So I don't totally know, but yes, that's what it is. This is tempered glass. This is real 3 16 inch Glass, that's another thing. Very difficult to find a glazier that has 3 16 I told him that's what I need because I have that track and this does have the L track from Pinball Life. It's almost like T-molding, but it's not. Um, it's not. Not to mention the glass, it's exact, it's, uh, and I'm gonna remove the glass. I don't know if I'm gonna do it in this video or another video, but um, I'm gonna probably remove it actually because we're gonna do the comparison. So removing this glass though, it, not that you have to like jiggle it, it's, it's tight. I'm, I'm like, there was no millimeter off or anything. It is tight. So the only thing I will say though is that sometimes and for Canada to know, um, it's only this one here. Sometimes when you do pull out like this, this, this rail might go with it, but it's really nothing major. You just kind of keep it in place. But all in all, the glass is amazing. So many glaciers are like, do you need the edges polished? Do you need the edges rounded? And I was like, I just need glass because I knew I'm going to have the L channels. Now, if you look very carefully, I don't have that rear um, channel piece. I don't think you need it, honestly. Uh, I don't think it's a need. It looks great. The, the glass cover is here and not to mention it's right up against T-molding. So I don't think you need it. I don't know if you could see it, but yes, definitely you could see like the... You could see like it on the edge, but it's more like where you are. When you're actually playing, it's not like it's not like a distraction and all that. Not to mention, if you turn off the LED matrixes, you don't see it anymore at all anyway. So you're able to game on. And the pretty obvious thing that I didn't even think about, but honestly, when it comes to glass and even black side rails, you do get a fingerprint magnet. And it's not that bad. It's not awful. Um, Canada has a couple of real EM pins. He did mention this kind of glass cleaner that he uses. So you do want to have Windex handy. But yes, you will see fingerprints on glass. The other thing, like I said, I'm very sure I just put the camera. You do see like my light here. Um, that happens with plexiglass too. So you can't really do anything about it unless you're playing in the dark. Like I play in the dark. You don't have any of the glares. But we'll now move on. Let's launch a couple of tables, let's play a little bit, and um, we'll wrap this video up. Now before we get into gameplay, I forgot to talk about the actual customer himself, but then I feel like everybody knows Project Canada. You can always go back to Project Canada, you can see how basically we met on Instagram, he messaged me, he asked me for an arcade cabinet, and such. This is actually very cool because I never had somebody say this to me, but he is getting this V-pin because of me. He was like, Vic, I see your videos, you influenced me to get a V-pin, and I was like, I never had anybody tell me that. That's pretty cool. So I guess I am an influencer. So I influenced him to get a virtual pinball machine. So again, awesome dude, Canada. Yes, this is going to Canada. And we learned from our first build, 
We do have to get a freight company involved. Obviously, I have three freight companies. This I will create it. I create it personally. I could get a professional person to create it, but you will pay premium top dollar for that crate. I could do it though. But on his end, he does have to get a broker involved. So there's a lot of stuff, especially when it comes to shipping overseas. There's a lot of stuff to go on it. But yes, this is going to Canada. It's not our first rodeo. And I'm happy I influenced you to get a virtual pinball machine. Now, the real reason I also want to bring up the customer and talk about this is that if you see my videos, I basically have two options. He went the option of him supplying everything. And I love it because I get these emails and people go like, I don't understand, like you really need everything? Yes, you have to supply me every, I don't have anything. Don't look here. Oh, Vic, I see a box of wire. No, I, that's not my wire. It is my wire, but it's not a thousand. I don't have anything. You must supply everything. And yes, when I say everything, I mean everything. This bill, for example, needs two six foot HDMI cables, which you could do regular HDMIs, but for this 120 hertz display, you do need a 2.0 or 2.1 HDMI cable, which is a little bit more money. You have to give me that. Again, USB-Cs, LEDs. I needed two reels of LEDs. I need the regular, regular LEDs and I need the addressables. He bought the LED mixtures. He bought the TVs. The TVs arrived at my house on the front door. I pulled them in from Best Buy and there you go. Again, when I say you must supply me everything, I'm not sure coding it. You must supply me everything. You want the nice two little switches to kill off the, the matrix? You have to buy the switches. That's everything, everything. All I supply is the wood, the vinyl, the T-molding, I'll wire. That's my job. I do the wiring. That's on, There's a lot of wiring. I will do probably a separate video of me opening up the TV and you could just see the amount of wire. But then again, you could go on my other videos and you'll see what wiring is involved in pinball um, and the configuring of the PC. That is what I do. Everything else, he supplied. And again, I do like that I do give you that option. If you do feel comfortable and you think you're gonna save a little bit of money, that is a-okay, you could supply me everything. I do like giving that option because people really kind of sit down and go, whoa, like, you know, this stuff does add up. This customer right here said it best. He's like, Vic, I gave you everything I'm already about four G's in parts. I was like, yes, you probably have a little bit more because when you start doing like the pinball life stuff and the shaker motor stuff, it, it adds up. And that's the thing, people don't really see that. And again, he's not even done. He, we still have to get glass, the side rails. We still have a lot of stuff to do for this build, the vinyl. There's a lot of stuff to do, but I do like to give you that option. So remember, I could supply you everything People already asked me, Vic, how much? This right here is a five-figure machine. 100%, 1,000%, it is a five-figure machine. If you're gonna argue it, then you don't know what's in this and do it yourself. Don't contact me. But again, if I was selling this, if I supplied all the pieces and I know what everything costs, that TV screen alone, if you didn't do your research and look up the 42-inch C2 OLED, if you don't realize that the screen alone is $1,200, then don't contact me, please. Oh, Vic, it's not $1,200, it's on sale right now for nine, 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 nine. Don't, just don't, God, just do it yourself. Don't contact me. But again, I could supply everything or you supply everything and then I will do my magic to make it a Vic VP build. End rent. <laughs> on that note, let's real quickly talk about the artwork. The artwork on this is amazing. It, uh, it is amazing. It's so funny, I'm on other pinball groups I do, I am in like Jersey Jack group and I'm in also like Stern and somebody in Jersey Jack was like, I hope Jersey Jack gets the rights to Harry Potter. And I was going to write, I was going to just make like a meme and be like, Hey, look what they announced. They announced Hogwarts Magical Pinball. That's how great the artwork looks. It looks like, like they, like, like, a, like a, it looks like it could be mass produced. It looks, it looks amazing. Uh, I'm proud of myself because of the whole font. Um, he, the customer found, we work together. That's the best thing when customer, me and the customer work together and we're eye to eye, you get a lot of stuff done. Again, when it came to the artwork, he sent me like no joke, 40 images and it wasn't like movie images. It was kind of a lot of like deviant art, something like where somebody drew Harry Potter and all that. And the biggest thing that he found was like 
somebody was making like potions or or spells in like a notebook and it looked cool but then it's like when you start trying to put it in it just it doesn't jive it's not like what you envision but basically he gave me a bunch of images and we wound up not using any of them and it was about a week of me doing artwork for that and then i went in on my own and i located the background that you see here he actually reached out to the artist and paid the artist for a high resolution image of that then i also found somebody made the nice um harry even the girl uh i don't know her name i'm not gonna butcher it but the, even the girl it's kind of like they're beat up and they're cut up same thing he paid the artist and uh it looks amazing no i will not reproduce this it is not my artwork project canada paid this artist if you want the artwork i will let you know to the artist and then you have to pay that artist this is not something that i will make another one of the hogwarts logo and the magical pinball i did that on photoshop it looks great it's got that little detail and stuff i'll bring you in closer so again he contacted this artist so that's one this one artist made this and the girl i don't know if the same artist made this gremlin thing i don't know whatever you want to call it um but again the background artwork he i found it for him and then he contacted the artist on deviant art and he paid him for the high resolution on that but again the big thing is this right here this logo i'm proud of myself because i think it looks awesome i did the whole kind of font and then the bezel and then the drop shadow and then the glow and then i added the 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 pattern to make it look like it's beat up it i'm proud of this one just this right here is like me i it's me i like that but all in all it is beautiful when it comes to the back box the customer did all the back box artwork so as you see the back box even the sides are both identical on each side he did tell me that this side is his main side the other side is going to go against the wall so you're not really going to see the artwork but you still got to do artwork but he did all this customer did this i i found this ring and i had an idea for the back box he then came up with this we used basically both of our images and it looks great i think it looks awesome if you see clearly the background this background is actually a piece of the main background with that whole thunder and all that let me talk to you real quick about the dmd because this is the thing that something people just don't really see but basically the dmd i have to buy a sheet of vinyl for this even though 80 percent of it is cut out but again same thing if you look very carefully this is the same background that's here it's actually duplicated you could see it here um basically like i mirror it so you, you can see like that's the same design and then it goes out only because the original artwork it's like one piece is red here and the other piece is blue here but i wanted this to look like fire was reaching the sculptures and all that so i think it looks great and again you that close now to the dmd you could see my dmd cut is hiding the bottom bezel of this screen it is clean you wouldn't really think that there are screens it's it's just clean. I love everything about it. Look at that. Even up here. Do you even see the back glass? <laughs> nope, you don't. Boom. Look at that. Even the back glass. Look. Edge to edge right there. That's the main thing. And that's, like I said before, I need the actual screen. That's, that's what I need. All right, so I got the lights off so you can see the screen better. We'll launch Cue Ball Wizard. That's the table that I'm playing right now for the bye week. Um... Big thing, like, I was always thinking about, like, hey, do I play better on a 42-inch versus a 50-inch? So we'll play a little bit now. I'll show you some features. We'll show you, like, pinball and stuff. This does have color DMD. I'll bring you back. But I have you there because I want to show you the QR code project. So all the builds will have my QR code project. So as you can see, the QR code does load up. If I take my phone, I take my camera, I focus in on the QR code. And now I'm able to play along, upload my score and such. It's a pretty cool feature. We'll press start. I have right now the table volume low, but at least you can hear the solenoids. Again, analog plunger. We got the skill shot, awesome. Again, 10 solenoids. SSF, you could hear it. Uh, I'll do a quick tilt nudge demo. I'll actually tilt on this. If I could just control the ball. So I'm going to do a quick nudge. So as you can see, even the cue ball and the eight ball move. But if I go aggressively, 
I got a tilt warning. Tilt warning again, and I tilt it. Cool. I'll bring you up a little, just so you can kind of see the DMD. And a little bit closer. Cool. Yeah, not too bad. Here we go. Oh, I wasn't paying attention to the scope shot. Oh, down the pipe. So real quick, I'm gonna hold shift and I could use my flipper buttons to bring up the volume. Here we go. Third ball is usually multi-ball too. Yep, we've got multi-ball. So we'll get a little bit of multi-ball action so you can see how the computer handles multi-ball. Oh, I lost. Oh, I lost both. <laughs> cool. But yeah, so as you can see, pinball, I'm able to hold shift. I have an option for global volume. If I do the magnet save, it's the table volume. And then the start and the coin is the actual exciter volume. So pretty cool. I'll make a separate video talking about pinball. I personally don't have that on my pin, but um, it works. It works out. So I can exit the table. Could run like diner. So launch ball starts the table. If I press the start button, it actually gives you a sub menu where you could record the play field or the back glass. That's a project I'm gonna do later on. I do wanna record the play fields. All the media I do get from Popper Media, um, but as you can see, like it's not a clean transition. So I will probably do that on my own. But as you can see, diner looks amazing. Number one, I'll raise the, top, the table volumes up. To hear the SSF. Extra ball, nice. And as you can see, the dot matrices, you adjust all of these with the game. Oh. Now, some tables, if you hit the magnet save, it does actually let you like change some settings visually. Not all the tables will do it. Not to mention, not all the tables have like SSF clear and such like that. And I can nudge. It's a thing of beauty. I'll exit out. We'll do real quick. Um, so I'm right now, I'm skipping the letter. That's why you see like there's nothing there. But if I hold the flipper, it's very good. So we can do real quick The Walking Dead. I played a lot of Harry Potter, so I'm kind of done with it. But showing you this because of the color DMD, I'm also trying not to cut, so. You can hear the shaker go off, I'm getting color DMD on this. It looks awesome, like I said, the only thing me Percy is this, this is a dollar game too. <laughs> Make sure the coin's good and then we stop. Oh, so I could bump up the table volume, it's already loud. Again, I could always lower it, it's too loud. So we can bring it down. Basically now I'm muted. That's something where again, like I said, pinball is, is it's a cool feature. I personally don't have that feature on mine. The only downside to pinball is that it affects, it affects the ball roll, the SSF. So as you can hear right now, I don't have ball roll because the volume is low. Um, so I'm not really a fan of that. My personal pin, I have the volume right, right in front of the cabinet. So it's somewhere that I honestly think Project Canada or any customer will just set the volume and you could always remove pin ball and just have it like that. This is just kind of nice where in case it's too loud, you know, you could always just raise it and lower it. But in all honesty, 
I don't really see many people using pinball. It's more of a set it and then forget it. But that color DMD is just a, it's, and I have over a hundred tables with color DMD. It's awesome, it's beautiful. That's a shaker motor. And then I can nudge. And you could always adjust the sensitivity. If you think it's too sensitive, you could always adjust that, you could change that, but I tilted. You could also adjust the tilt sensitivity. Cool. I'm gonna bring it back. It's awesome. So now real quick, I'll do kind of a power down and power up uh, scenario. So right now we are in popper. I did exit the table. There is two things you could do. You could turn off the computer right now, but you might get something where it's like saying, hey, it can't close because it's waiting for a program. I do have the shift exit set for the X key. That exits pin up popper. Then I could come here right in front is a power button. One button press. I wait for everything to turn off. I wait for the TVs to show no signal, and then I will kill the power to it. So I have no signal here. I'm usually gonna wait for this one here. It's just making sure that the PC is totally powered down. Now keep in mind, even though the PC is down, the three fans in the rear are always on. Those are always spinning. Um, so if you're the type that just turns off the PC and leaves everything plugged in, you're gonna hear the fans, okay? Now I'll bring it back to life, we'll plug it back in, we'll turn it back on. I'm basically gonna turn, we're gonna hit the switch. It's kinda cool, I'm doing it with no cuts. The big thing about V-Pin, okay, I always laugh at this. You have to wait for all the displays to be fully on. I can't stress it enough because if you turn on the PC now, your display is going to be jumbled. It's going to be awful. So basically what I do is that I wait for that. I wait for this white, whatever picture is here, and it says no signal. I then proceed and I hit the power button just one time and it'll boot up. Just let it do its thing. Can't stress it enough, you have to wait for the displays to fully be on. If you hit the switch and then turn the PC power on right away, this display turns to display three, then the play field, is, it's a nightmare. I'm telling you, it is a huge nightmare. As far as like the pinball stuff, there's two programs that launch before Popper. I have it all set automatically. So you're gonna see a program called Dofflinks. That's really for like the lighting and stuff to really talk to FX2 and FX3. You're gonna see Pinval also, that's gonna be on the, on the actual desktop. And then I have it set to after 30 seconds, Popper will automatically start. So as you can see, Dofflink started, my Pinval started, and then sure enough, our Popper will start. Again, I have it set to 30 seconds after the logon. It's just to make sure everything is fully on and you're in. You're able to game on. You go ahead, we can pick FX2, we can pick FX3, we can go to Virtual Pinball, and game. Now again, going back to what I was saying with the whole pinball, um, I don't have it. That one thing where like the global volume, if you lower it, then it lowers also SSF. I'm not a fan of it. So there is a way to remove that program uh, entirely. It's just if you do want to adjust the volume, you kind of have to go in the rear. That's where my personal pin, I have it in the front. But I have that big dial that you saw, it's in the front. It's not very convenient, especially when you have to ship these. But all in all, solid. Well, there you guys have it, a kind of in-depth, full overview on what's going on, the little rants that I went on and all that. I just did a lot of talking on this. But Hogwarts Magical Pinball officially done. Stay tuned, I will do the comparison video. I'm gonna literally do that right now. Again, I'm doing all videos today because tomorrow this thing is gonna be crated and then we're gonna get some quotes and get it shipped out. Whew. Project Canada part two. I almost called it do like part de, but I did a quick Google search and apparently part de is a awful, like, uh, what's the word? Sequel. They usually, they literally said the word awful sequel. And I was like, I don't wanna do part de now. <laughs> but yes, there you go. Vic BP, Game Case Arcades, Pinball. Gotta love it.